Trump endorsed Senate nominee in Georgia, Herschel Walker, has been one of the worst political candidates we've ever seen run for Senate. Just yesterday, the second woman to say that Walker allegedly pressured her into having an abortion gave a press conference. She appeared on camera, though she did not disclose her name. At the presser, she came forward with what she claims to be new evidence supporting their relationship. See that picture there? I should tell you, Walker says this woman is lying. NBC News has not independently verified her claims. But Walker has said that he supports a national ban on abortion. He has called abortion murder and does not support exceptions for rape or incest. This is precisely the kind of vetting problem that everyone in Republican circles was warning about back when Donald Trump handpicked the former football star and celebrity apprentice contestant to be his chosen Senate candidate in Georgia. But it's not the only big problem with Walker's candidacy. There are many. But another one is that he doesn't really live full time in Georgia. Like failed Pennsylvania Republican Senate candidate Mehmet Oz, Walker's a carpetbagger. Now, it's true, Walker has strong roots in the state of Georgia. He played college football at the University of Georgia, won the Heisman Trophy. But today, a new report shows Walker is getting a tax break on his house in Dallas, Texas, one that is intended only for a primary residence. Walker's campaign did not respond to a request for comment from The New York Times. We've also reached out and have not heard back. The new information calls into question Walker's standing as a real resident running for Senate in the state of Georgia. Charles Bow lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a columnist for The New York Times. He's written quite a bit on Herschel Walker's campaign, and he joins me now. You know, Charles, I remember when Walker was being floated very early on because Donald Trump had a relationship with him, had had him on a contestant on his show, and in his sort of like, you know, fixed idea way was like, Walker, Walker should run in, in Georgia. And at the time... I remember reading a bunch of articles being like, well, he doesn't live in Georgia. <laughs> he lives inside Dallas. Uh, like, he he probably should live in Georgia. And that issue is still there, even though it does seem like it went away. It's not like Warnock tried to do to Walker what Fetterman did to Oz. Yeah, I, you know, Warnock is just not that kind of an attack dog. He's not your traditional politician. He's a, a pastor of a church. You get that sensibility from him. People here in Georgia always knew that they were kind of bringing Herschel Walker back into Georgia to run. He was a carpetbagger from the beginning. That is the least of the problems, however, with the, the running of Herschel Walker. He is completely, completely ill-equipped to be a senator or elected official of any sort on any level. And everyone here knows that, even the people who vote for him know that, but they are locked in. Now they have no other candidate. When they had a chance to really challenge Herschel Walker, which you'll bid in the primaries, no one did it because he was Donald Trump's pick. All of this would have come out. They probably would have had a stronger candidate. There was a lot of resentment or, or fear of Stacey Abrams, which drove a lot of, of uh, vote to Kemp. You know, I don't know if people remember this, but, but Marjorie Taylor Greene once said on, I think it was on a podcast, that her voters were telling her that they would move out of the state rather than be governed by Stacey Abrams. The idea of a black person, a black mm -hmm. woman, Stacey Abrams, governing the people of Georgia freaked people out. And so Kemp had that advantage. Walker, or the candidate who is in the Republican seat on the Senate side, would have also had it, but he's terrible. And so he didn't have it. And so this is a big problem. This idea of him being a carpetbagger and getting a, a tax break in Texas only adds us marginally to that because there's so much other stuff well, that disqualifies well, him from being a, yeah. a senator from Georgia. I mean, the thing about Walker Walker, and here's where I do think there's a sort of, there's a little bit of a similarity with Mehmet Oz. It's like, when Mehmet Oz was running for senator of Pennsylvania, I was like, what's the argument? What's the logic, Mehmet Oz, Pennsylvania senator? Right, like Pat Toomey, he was a Republican congressman before. Like, you know, Katie Britt, who just got elected in Alabama, worked in Alabama politics. I believe she, she was a Richard Shelby staffer in Alabama, right? So, you know, there's a certain logic there. It's like, why is this person going to be the senator from this place? There's literally no reason other than name recognition and Donald Trump likes him. That is the sum total of the argument for why this individual should represent this state in the U.S. Senate. I mean, I think they can make a slightly stronger case if, in fact, he had any other qualification to be a senator, which he does not. But they could probably make a slightly stronger case because he is a son of Georgia, right? So he yes, is that's born true. Yeah. here, raised here. He goes to college. He goes to high school here, college. Here. So there, it's not like he's completely disconnected from the yep. state of Georgia. He's just disconnected from reality. Like, he's disconnected from intellect. He's disconnected from qualifications. That's the bigger problem. 
There's also, I mean, one of the things that's happened in the, the, the abortion discussion here where, you know, there have been, there was the first reporting in which the woman said that, uh, who actually uh, had a son with Herschel Walker uh, and uh, said that in, in one case he, he pressured for an abortion, actually pressured her for a second, though she didn't have it. She showed a get well car, uh, soon card. There was a, a receipt from the abortion uh, clinic where she received the abortion. You know, a lot of this is sort of... The way that it's been kind of characterized as like, oh, these dark stories from his past. But to me, the, the key thing is he would vote for a national abortion ban. <laughs> like that is that is the position that he is running on. That is the party that he wants to be a part of. And this demonstrates the fundamental hypocrisy or unseriousness about that. I wonder what role you think, given on this day when we have news, the Georgia Supreme Court has now reinstated the state's uh, ban of abortion after six weeks. Um, what role abortion has played in this race? What role you think it will play in the last few weeks of the runoff? I think it has, it has played a role in this race in the same way that it has played in, in other races. Because it is not a separate line on the ballot, it plays a little bit less of a role. Yep. You have to kind of yep. vote by, by proxy that this person is, is with the party that opposes the thing that I am in favor of. I think the big question, though, the thing that we don't talk enough about is that that, that child is alive. Yeah. Right. This is the party that talks incessantly about absent black fathers. And Herschel Walker is, by all measures, an absent black father to that child. How do you how do, the Republicans in this state have made twisted themselves into not to not kind of uh, put Herschel Walker into the basket. They put all other black people in. Right. If anybody, any other black person on the liberal side would show up not being able to make a sentence, they uh, they'd attack and, 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 and lambast that person. But not Hirsch Walker because he's saying what they want to hear. Any other black person who was an absentee father who was advocating for abortion for the people who he impregnated would be lambasted by these people. But because he's saying the things that they want to hear, they excuse it. He is any other black person. Who was do who who behaved in the way that Herschel Walker behaves, but happened to be liberal and actually supporting policies that help black people, would be lambasted by the Georgia Republicans who are now supporting yeah. and excusing and making excuses for Herschel Walker. Yeah, I mean the way that I've run the thought experiment in my head is just take 30 seconds to consider what would be the electoral results in the divided state of Georgia if the black Democratic nominee for a statewide office had Herschel Walker's package. I mean, it's just like, obviously, it, it does it. you know, it, it's not going to happen. You've now got the full team um, trying to pull him over the finish line, including the governor, Brian Kemp, who I think helped him probably the first time around because he's relatively popular and was was uh, uh, on the on the ballot. He's not this time. Um, he will be campaigning for him. I wonder if you think how, how much that matters. A, it's a runoff without any other offices, or B, that Kemp is campaigning for. Listen, Kemp has to do this to stay in the good graces of the Republican Party because Donald Trump already hates him. And so the only other part of the party that, that, that he can appeal to is the Senate Republicans, Mitch McConnell and the like, who need help. They want to have the extra seat, even though it, means it doesn't mean that they're going to get control of the Senate. It does strengthen their hand in the Senate. He is, Kemp is trying to stay in every grace. Kemp wants nothing to do with Herschel Walker, and he proved that during his yes. campaign <laughs> for governor. And, and no one wants to touch Herschel Walker, but they have to stay in the good grace of the Republican Party, and so they do their due, due, due diligence. They do what the party is asking them to do. Yeah, it has been quite a spectacle uh, this entire race. Charles Blow, great pleasure to have you on. Have a great holiday. Thank you.